Agent Sanford, I think when we broke, we were about to play or talk about call BB. What can you tell us about call BB? It was on 428-2016 at 9.42 a.m., and it's from uh, Charlie Adelson to uh, Donna Adelson. All right. <clears throat> Morning, Charlie. Hey, how are you? Hey, um, are you in an office or home? Or uh, are you? No, no, I'm driving to an office now. What's up? Well, um, Eric has called me this morning, and because <clears throat> Dad was on the road to the office, so Erica called me and she said, she said, I wouldn't normally bother you with this. She says, I don't know if it's a sales call or what, but somebody called this morning and he, he said his name was Sammy. And he gave you some very important cases last week, and he hasn't heard from you. And he wants you to call him back, and here's the number. Can you pause so, for a minute? Oh. All right, so Mrs. Adelson has heard on this call talking about um, a message from the undercover. Are you familiar with that message? Yes, I am. All right, and we heard a, a conversation when we had the undercover agent on the stand where he called the Adelson Institute. Is that the call that Mrs. Adelson is referencing here? Yes, it is. All right, so that call, the undercover calling the Adelson Institute, did that occur between AA and BB? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Sorry, we continue publishing? Yeah. So I you know, wanted to verify the number was the same, was the correct number that I had you know, told you about. So, obviously, I'm not going to call the number. Erica said, you know, this just has to be a sales call. Just hit star 67 before you call the number, and then they won't know the number you're calling from. I said, oh, okay, I'll write that down. What's your suggestion? Um, the, the odd thing is this, is that that's the same number you gave me, right? I, I don't know, because I gave you the number. I never kept it. You, you kept it. Tell me what the number was. Uh, 305 right. 712 6570. Right. 6570. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's, it's someone, it's, the odd thing is, is that it's 712 6570. Yeah, that's the same number, and it was called, and no one picked up. Maybe I'll pick up now. Okay, so someone called today? We called the office, and Erica called me. She I hope I'm not bothering this copy of sales call. Yeah, I, listen, it's, that's, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm looking into it right now. Yeah, I think it should work. And I just wanted to verify the number. I know, and that's, the odd thing is you think the number would be picked up. I mean. Yeah, um, don't pick it up. <laughs> so let me do this. Let me, yeah. let me call somebody. Yeah. And, but I, I wouldn't, Mom, trust me when I tell you, I, I wouldn't worry at all. Okay, okay. And I'll, I'll tell you why, especially, uh, especially because, um, what do you call it? Especially because I know you know who it is. So let me call someone and take care of it now, okay? Thank you, Sharon. All right. Love you. All right, and the next call is CC. Who's making that call? <clears throat> um, that is uh, Charlie Adelson to Catherine McBowell. All right. And was that done on the same day as the call we just heard? It was. All right. About just a few minutes after that call? Yeah, just a few minutes. Correct. Okay. I'd like to publish CC at this time. Let me ask you, Agent Sanford, while they're passing those out, between BB and CC, was there an unanswered call that was made? Yes, I believe there was. All right. And was that from Charlie Adelson to Catherine Magvanoa? That's correct. Do you know the time of the unanswered call? Um... I don't know the exact time. Don't believe. Is there something you could use to refresh your memory? 
So BB we had at 9.42 a.m., and that lasted about two and a half minutes. Right. Yeah, it was definitely before the 9.42, uh, 9.49, of course. Okay. So sometime between 9.44 and 9.49? That's correct. Okay. Objection meeting. Okay. We can publish CC, please. You have reached the voicemail box of seven eight six five six. Four, one, three, one, two. Hey, it's me. Uh, it's important calling. Thanks. All right. Whose answering machine was that? Or voicemail? Nobody has answering machines. Right. The voicemail was uh, Mrs. Adelson's. Don Adelson's. Mrs. Adelson, I think... I think you need to look at that again. I'm CC. sorry. CC, uh, two, sorry. 2275. Sorry, look at the wrong one. That was, that was Charlie to Captain McBomb. Was, that was her voicemail on her cell phone. Sorry. All right, that's okay. And then, so, after Mr. Adelson <clears throat> hangs up with Mrs. Donna Adelson and BB, we've got the unanswered call in between BB and CC, a voicemail on CC. What happens next? <clears throat> um... Mr. Adelson attempts to call Ms. Magwa uh, at least two more times and goes straight to voicemail. All right. And then what about DD at 10.43 a.m.? Yes. Um, DD at 10.43 a.m. Um, is uh, Katie Magwanwa calling Charlie Adelson back. Okay. Let's publish DD, please. What happened? Um, somebody called my dad's office mm -hmm. and looking for him. Saying okay. that they dropped off some paperwork uh, on the computer. Mm -hmm. There was a phone number on there. And actually the person left the message with Erica. And then Erica called okay. my mom up because she's like, you know, normally I wouldn't call you up. But I had a phone call. I was like, yeah. Uh -huh. so where's the phone number that they're calling from, though? I, I can ask Erica, but Erica, um, Erica said a guy by the name of Sammy called uh -huh. the office this morning saying that I left some people work with Dr. Adelson last week, and I left the number on there, and he needs to call me at that number. No, somebody's like fucking pulling your bones and shit. Well, um, this, this is the third. This is the third. Call the number. Call the number, because I'm about to call my fucking phone. I fucking, I mean, it's, it's someone who wants to be called back. Let's put it that way. Do you, do you still have the number? Yeah, well, obviously that number, nobody's picking up. Well? That's a not, a not a working number. It's like a Gmail number. Nobody, nobody's calling the like. I'm just asking you to find out who the fuck it is. It's like, yeah. get that number that's off of your, off of the thing, off of the number, uh, off of the freaking um, caller ID. At the office? Yes, obviously. Because this is like a fucking bullshit game. Well, they're not, they're not coming out on foot, they're not writing letters, and they're not calling the office. Because they have nothing better to do. 
Well, I don't know what to tell you because I called that number myself. Okay. Well, let's let's call that number again and find out what the fuck's going on. And nobody picks up. And even oh. tried another number and left a message. Okay. Well, I would... I'm try- trying to get whoever's threatening your family and helping you guys out and trying to help you guys out. But it's like if they don't pick up, like what the I- fuck? I, I understand. It's like it's a fucking joke. I understand that they fucking called this morning and they're waiting for the phone call. That's what I'm telling you. And since it's three times. Get a number or whatever that is that's, that's calling you. Or you're 305 or whatever 6570. Do you have the number? Exactly. That number is obviously, it's like a non working number. Okay. Can you, can you find it? Okay. And then it's like. What a, I don't fucking understand. If either somebody's pulling your bones, somebody is just harassing you, or somebody's trying to get something out of you. Okay. Find out who the fuck it is, because the other phone call is going to be the FBI. I'm, I'm exactly. telling you. Well, I'm telling you, and then when they do catch the person, they're going to be asking him lots of questions about who Katie is. We already spoke about this. It's like not even like a fucking joke anymore. Because it's not a fucking joke, It's like Katie, somebody, it's somebody's not. harassing you guys, or somebody's harassing and using my name. And it's like, okay, you so can die like that? Well, Katie, think it through. Find out who the fuck it is. That's all I'm asking you. No, I'm going to go straight from my fucking cell phone because it's fucking bullshit. It's fucking, somebody's trying to fucking pinpoint some bullshit. Like it's, it's getting aggravating. Yeah, it is. All I'm saying is find out who the fuck it is and tell them to stop playing their games. I don't know who, who you have to talk to, but it's, it needs to be nipped in the bud. Before. No, but I'm going to handle this shit myself, bro, because it's some fucking bullshit. I'm going to handle it my motherfucking self. Well, stream my motherfucking number. They fucking, if, if Erica wants to call back, be like, oh, is this the right number? Okay, I have your fucking whatever fucking shit taken care of. Okay, because it's fucking bullshit. Find out. That's threats, bro. I'm about to go to that fucking FBI. I'm fucking getting irate with this shit already. It's either the FBI fucking fucking playing game or fucking whatever it is. No. I'm fucking getting pissed. All right, we'll find out. All I'm saying is. You gave a wrong phone number. Okay. You're an idiot. You gave a fucking wrong number. Get the fucking number that fucking calls because I'm gonna call them. Okay. And, and well, fucking talk to me. I don't even fucking give a shit about all these fucking cold shit, whatever shit anymore. Okay. I'm pissed the fuck off. Like, I'm going to fucking go to the cops right now. Okay. Well, either you go to the cops or we go to the cops or exactly. find out. Or find I'm out who the fuck. I'm going to fucking go to the cops because this is fucking bullshit. Well, find out who the fuck this is. Because this person evidently knows you and knows your family. They know exactly. me, and they know my family. And you don't, so. you don't think that that fucking scares the shit out of me? Like somebody fucking saying my name out loud well, or whatever? Katie, whatever. Someone's messing, okay, someone's messing with you, they're messing with me. Someone's messing with me, they're messing with you. It's one exactly. the same. So what I'm saying is, find out who the fuck That number doesn't is. fucking work. If you can get a hold, you go to different offices, call the motherfucking number. See if that fucking number works. Bottom line. Because... I tried myself, and that shit does not work. Katie, call them, find out who the fuck it is now. Trust me on this. Find out who the fuck it is. Get the number, listen to me, and get the number, and something playing with this game, because I went to the I, I'm going with your parents to the fucking FBI, where the fuck is doing this shit, and fucking go and fucking report whoever's harassing me. Right. That's Katie. it. Katie, do you have... Do you, I gotta get back to it. Do you? Uh, Charlie calling uh, Catherine Montgomery. Okay, and is this the same day as the one we just heard? Yes, it is. It's about. It's eleven seventeen, so less than thirty minutes later. All right. Let's publish EE, please. Hey, I'm here to start six seven and see if it uh, and see what it is. Okay, do that. Okay, you haven't you haven't heard anything from me, not since have you? The one? 
you haven't heard anything from any of this nonsense? Well, obviously, we're on the same page. Okay. Let me, let me do that. Let's see where we are. Okay. And does Mr. Adelson at this point dial the undercover number? Yes, he does. And is this the first person to dial that number since it was handed to Mrs. Adelson? Yes, it is. Okay. And this is going to be called GG. Could you give us the date and time? It's 428 of 16 at 11.33 a.m. All right. And this is the call from Mr. Adelson to the undercover? That's correct. All right. that GG, please. Can you remind us how long it's been since that number was initially handed to Mrs. Adelson? Um, this was on the 28th, and the initial bump was on the 19th. All right, I think we're ready to publish. GG. Hello, you guys. Who is this? Who's this? Uh, someone's been calling my family and trying to figure out who this is. Uh, uh, in, in reference to what, man? Someone by the name of Sammy called. Yeah, that's me, man. All right, what's what's going on? Well, what's going on is my brother Tato. Okay, my brother Tato has not been taken care of. His family's not been taken care of. I talked to a dentist. Why are you calling me? Who, who, who are you? I gave the number to a lady. I don't know Tato. You don't know Tato? I'm no. sure you know Katie and Tuto. They've been taken care of since the family problem been taken care of up north. I don't, I don't know who I was, you I was, are. You don't? Well, this no. is going away, my friend, because let me tell you something. I was at Broward with Tato, and he told me the whole story. He told me nobody was taking care of him. Nobody was taking care of his family. The family uh, was taking care of Katie and Tuto, and nothing's been taken care of with Tato. So we know, we know what's going on. And that don't needs to be taken care of, do the right thing. The lady already has the paperwork, she knows what I'm talking about. We know Katie, we know Tuto, we know we've been taken care of. All right, let me, let me look at no more, no more fucking around, man, no more fucking around. If this ain't going away, we need, Tato needs, you guys need to do the right thing for Tato. That's my brother, man. That's my brother, and he needs to be taken care of. His family needs to be taken care of, just like Katie and Tuto have been taken care of. Uh, I don't, I've never met, met these people, but let me call you back, okay? That's bullshit, man. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You know this lady. I don't know your relationship with this lady, but we know what the fuck is going on. Right, this ain't going that. away. Take care, take care of Tato just like you take care of Katie and Tuto, man. Let me call you back. Okay, do we have some unanswered calls after the GG call that we just listened to? Yes, we do. Tell us about those, please. Um, at 1139, which is approximately uh, just a couple minutes after that last call, um, Charlie Adelson attempts to call Catherine Magbama. All right, and she didn't answer? She did not answer. And then again at 1140, 
So right. immediately after the first unanswered call, he calls again? Exactly. Okay, and then what? Let's go to HH. Um, at 1241 p.m., um, Katie returns, to, Katie McMullen returns the call to Charlie Adelson. Okay, so this is still 428.16? That's true, that's correct. All right, publish HH. Give me two minutes. Okay. Hang on a second. I called him over the like 30 times, and then somebody picked up. And it sounded like he said, he goes, you know, you know, who is this? Uh, and I said, I'm returning a call. He said, and he's like, what is this in reference to? So the guy that called my office this morning mm -hmm. said, this is Simon. So mm -hmm. I said, uh, someone by the name of Simon mm -hmm. placed a call this morning. Yeah. And I go, what's I go, what's this about? Yeah. He's like, yeah. who are you? I go, that's, that's not important. What yeah. do you need? You there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, I said, it's not important who I am. I said, what can I do to help you out? I said, what do you need? Uh -huh. And he's like, listen, man. He's like, um, uh, Tuco, or whatever the fuck his name is. He's like, mm -hmm. someone did a really big favor for you and was there for you. And we know, mm -hmm. and I'm, listen, I'm Tuco's brother. And mm -hmm. I was with him in Broward. So I don't know if this guy's in Broward or whatever. He's like, I was with him down in Broward, and mm -hmm. he hasn't been taken care of. His family hasn't been taken care of. And he's like, it's fucking bullshit. He's like, and he, you know, as he's, I'm letting him talk. As he's talking, mm -hmm. I'm hearing a little bit of a New York, um, New York accent. Mm -hmm. You know, as he's trying to, you know, when he picked up the phone, he didn't sound like a tough guy when he picked up the phone. But it was mm -hmm. like, as he was talking to me, like the tough guy routine sounded like it was coming out. So he's like, listen, he's like, I was with. I know you're. T I know you guys took care of, and you're taking care of uh, Katie and Tudo, and you're taking care of their family. Now he needs to be taken care of. And I was with him in Broward, and he's done a big favor for you. And I go, sir. I go, I don't know. He goes, I know you've been giving money to uh, to Katie and Tudo and taking care of their family. I go, no money's been given. I said, I don't even know who these people are, and. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. He, and he's like, who are you? I'm like, listen, it's not important. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. No one's paying anybody. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, listen, man, this shit's not fucking going away. You better fucking do the right thing. He's like, it's not going away. Oh, you so better... they're saying bad words? What's that? So they're saying bad words? He may, he may have said a bad word. I mean, he may have cursed. But he goes, uh -huh. listen, he left it with me. But listen, this, this, he may have been like this shit or whatever it is. This shit's mm -hmm. not going away, and you need to you need to help uh, Tuto's family, whatever his name is, family out the way you're helping out Katie and Tuto. And I go, nobody, I don't know who you're talking about, and I don't, I, I don't know what I can do for you. I said, he goes, you know, he goes, well, it's, it's not going away, and he said, he says, do the right thing. You got to help them out, which. When he I heard should have been like, who are you, number one? He, well, he told me he's his brother. Obviously, he's not going to get his real name. And I was, I was being really polite to him. Like, I've got, yeah. hold on a second. You got it? Okay, give me two minutes and I'll be right there. I was being really polite to him. Okay, he said he's, he's a brother from Broward? No, no, he says I know him from Broward. Or I saw him down in Broward. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, like, this guy that they're talking about was incarcerated in Broward or mm -hmm. held in Broward or whatever. The guy A referenced... Broward. Mm -hmm. B reference Katie and Tuto. So they're saying family. my name again. Uh -huh. Yeah, so there's your name and and uh, some other guy's name, but I don't even fuck to know. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's saying, so he's talking about Tuto, which I don't even fucking know who, who that is, so that's two people I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. And he's talking about your family, saying your family is being helped out, which 
I don't fucking know. I mean, other than the hours I give you to go up in the office on the weekend, take care of it. Yeah, you. exactly. But, but that's, I do, I don't help you out. You fucking earn the money on the weekend when you go up. And this is the three or five number you call? The three or five? Yep. And he, he left it where And he it rang a long time? I want to say it was like on the seventh or eighth morning that it picked up. And he left That's a it. a long with, time. Because yeah, you yeah, no, I was almost like, phone uh, calls. I was almost like, uh, and he was asking me, like, who, you know, who is this? He goes, he goes, listen, I gave that paper to, to a lady. He goes, who are you? I go, don't worry about it. I go, I'm trying mm-hmm. to figure, trying to find out what's going on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they, this person is on the assumption that I'm helping. They said they're a friend in Broward, or they said they're a brother. He, he said he was just, he said he was this guy some this guy who evidently told my mom he's incarcerated his brother and he's saying that he has not been paid and his family has not been taken care of and this is not going away and like I mean I I'm not I mean I don't help I don't just give charity out like you, you come in my you office can, like, you can't be like you're like freaking people threatening you and mentioning no. names and, you know what and I mean he sounded honestly it, he didn't sound Latin. And he sounded like he had a, just you know there's a little bit of a New York accent to his to his toughness. Mhm. So like well spoken. Yeah. Wasn't didn't threaten me at all. Did, did not threaten me at all. He just let me know this ain't this is not going away. And, mm-hmm. you need, and he's like you need to take care of him. You need to do the right thing. He was there for you. And I'm like right, um, I go I go I don't know. He goes I go I don't know who this person is. I said but. I said, I said, let me call you back later. That's how I left it with him. I said, I'll, I said, sir, I said, I don't know who this guy is you're even talking about, but mm-hmm. let me give you a call back later, okay? He's like, okay, do the right thing. Which, do, do the right, right thing. thing? Do the right thing? You know, sounds like a fucking cop at fishing that's sort of investigator or someone's playing games. But... I don't, I don't, he's coming up with a lot of fucking details, and I, I'd love to know these details, because I don't know two of the people's names they're talking about, and you may, you may be even the wrong king, and then I feel even more like a dumbass. Exactly. Just one, a little quick recap, just because I don't want, like, you know, like, how did, how did, like, the conversation start? The ring, and he goes, who is, it? he goes, hello? I go, hi. He goes, who is this? And I go, I'm returning a phone call. And he goes, what is this in reference to? So I That's said, the exact word? Yep. He goes, what is this in reference to? In reference to? Wow, this is very some educated words. Yeah. No, he was mm-hmm. well-spoken when my mom met him. He goes, what is this in reference to? So I said, I'm returning a call that Simon, I'm returning a message that Simon had left this morning. That was the name, Simon? That was the name when he called up my office mm-hmm. and spoke to Arifik and said, listen, I gave a piece of paper to him. Mrs. Adelson last week with a number on it, tell her to call mm-hmm. me and this is signed. Okay. So mm-hmm. I said, I said, okay. I said, I, I said, I'm re- returning a message from sign. So then he mm-hmm. knew that it was in reference to this fucking nonsense. Mm-hmm. So I said, you know, what, what I told him, I said, you know, I go, he goes, well, you, I know that your family, the family is yeah, yeah. money. Yeah. He kept, he kept referencing but, that like, we're giving all this money to a fucking family, like, and referencing there's two names, there's Tudo and Tuco or whatever. That yeah. supposedly I'm giving money to you and some other dude and your uh-huh. family. I don't know these people. Never met them. So it's and really interesting. And he's a brother. Is he brother to this person that he's saying that's incarcerated? Yeah, he's saying he's his brother who's incarcerated. And but he's saying he he's from Broward. He said he's. He said he referenced something with I was with him in Broward. I was with him in Broward. So I don't know if this guy incarcerated in Broward County. Is he from Broward? I don't know who these who these people are. But I don't like the, the reference okay, no, no, and and your family and so who I don't know who this dude is that you're with or if they're just making up names or yeah. if we should just go to the FBI and say you know what let's let's play phone tap. Exactly. So I don't, you know what I'm saying? Though? I don't want. You could have been like, while you're doing all the threats, number one, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Well, he never, he never said he was in a hurry, and he was, you know, I just wanted him to keep talking. Uh huh. 
And that's why I wanted to Yes, we got a feeling of who the person is. Yeah, because he wasn't like, you know, he always wanted to know who I was and I was at the time for him. And he, yeah. but when he, he left in the he was like, listen, he goes, you gave him money, you need, he has not been paid, his family hasn't been paid, it's fucking wrong, and he really like, it's wrong, and he goes to me, he goes, this ain't going away. He's like, do the right thing, take care of him, he helps you out. I'm like, I don't know, I go, I go, I don't know. Who, who? I, go, I don't know him. I go, my Did family. Did he his teeth out or what? Like, what the fuck I does think, that mean? Listen, it could be a lot of be a patient? It's like, you, go, you run across so many people every day. Listen, in two seconds, you, you, you read something in the newspaper, or you Google the last name, and in three minutes, the homeless man today has the technology to mm-hmm. know where you live, where, <laughs> where you live? work. Right. Well, because there's now they're calling me in. I was in the air, I thought, okay, okay. Let, me, so, let me find me, out who the, the fuck is referencing all of this, well, the, but the I will call that number. They're picking it up. If, whether you want to call it or, or if you know a friend that could be convinced him to tell someone to like stop the shit. Three or five seven twelve is you five seven eight, correct? Uh, sixty five. Yeah, three or five seven twelve is fifty five seventy. Um, okay. They need to know that I'm not. And yeah, I, it's fucking stupid what they're doing. Okay. I'm not paying anything because I think you pay to be guilty. Yeah, time. no. What the hell is that? No. Okay. The, the only thing I want to do is collect my reward from the FBI if I know. Of course, it. no. I want these people to go. I want these people to go to jail for like a freaking like you know, Dude, you know what kind of vacation I could get with that money? Exactly. I need my right. vacation. Let me let me go. Let me go. In. All right, I'll talk to you later. Call me later. All right, thanks. Bye. After HH, we go to II, which I believe is a text. What can you tell us about II? It was from uh, Catherine McBonwa to uh, Mr. Garcia on 428 at 12.57 p.m. And how long after the conclusion of that call we just heard did Ms. McBonwa text Mr. Garcia? Um, at the conclusion of the call, it was about a, an 11-minute call, so just a few minutes after. What's the content of the text? It says, baby, call me when you can. And does that call happen? No. All right, let's go to JJ. What's JJ? Oh, yes. uh, Katie calls Garcia at 1.22 p.m. on the same date. All right, so she tells him to call her but he doesn't she ends up calling him first that's correct all right and this is about 20 minutes later after the text after the text correct all right i'd like to publish jj Hello? Yeah. Hey, you busy? Yes. Or you just woke up? Eating a sandwich. Oh my god, my freaking net. Eating a sandwich again? Yeah, um, a sandwich, sir. How much is a sandwich? It's better than the mustard. Oh, uh, ew, yuck. Okay, no, my head is pounding. No, I have like a migraine right now. I walked no, in I and it's like meeting outside. There's like a meeting outside. I guess they have meetings on Thursdays, and then I had my own meeting in the conference room. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. <sighs> I have more information for you. And when I got a call this morning, like, I, I couldn't I, I couldn't even take it. Because I had to step out of my meeting, because I just heard about it. And I was like, because I got a call back to back to back. So, hold on. Give me one second. I want my boss to come out. Um, what was I going to tell you? Okay, so this person contacted the office. Hello? Yeah. Whatever. Supposedly he said his name is Simon. Okay? Contacted the office saying, oh, whatever. Um, I had given a paper to um, this person there. Obviously somebody's doing their whatever they're doing. They're threatening. 
and like they're very very close to reporting it already. Whatever it is, it's getting good because my name's involved, and um, it gets this gets better. But I'm like, you know what, a couple bullshit. Just tell me everything on the phone right now because I don't have time. I'm fucking working. Like, what what is it? Like, I want to handle this and I want to handle it like right now. So, um, he said, okay, they call the office. I was like, look, I tried to contact that number. It's like not a working number. They're like, I was like, why don't you go ahead and start to design it and go call that freaking number? And then, whatever, that person did it. They go, okay, I'm returning a phone call. And then the person goes, who are you? And they're like, doesn't matter. I'm returning a phone call regarding something of a paper or whatever. And then they're like, okay, well, we know that you've been helping me out. Um, they said my name and your name. And I... Um, uh, huh? Is it Katie or Google? Yes. This is your name. Um, that you've been helping them out. And he's like, I don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. I don't, I don't even know. I only, I don't even know if you're the right person that they're talking about. For all I know, it could be another KD or whatever. And I was like, okay. What else do they say? They're like, oh, well, they're a brother. They're a brother of um of this other person that's supposedly incarcerated, and they're a brother of them, and then they know him from 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 Broward. I don't know if they were together in Broward and he got out or whatever the case was. And he's like, but this family needs help. Do the right thing. Like, they, the fact, he's like, we know for a fact that you're helping out there. I'm like, helping who out? Yeah, I haven't helped. I worked for you before. Like, that's it. I was like, well, that's not helping me out. That's me working for you. And I was like, I don't know what they're talking about. So, but they said, do the right thing. His name is supposedly Simon. Um, they're a brother of the person that's incarcerated, and they said that name. And I was like, no, this needs to stop. Like, this needs to stop. Because somebody's harassing me, somebody's harassing your family, and they're putting my name and then I'll need, and that per- other person's name. It's getting too detailed. It's somebody that he knows, for sure. Yeah. For sure. He said that the person... Had a, like he's just trying to get him to talk more. He's like the person has like kind of maybe a New York accent. He some of the words was a little bit you know like he he wasn't threatening at all. He was just saying you need it's time for you to help out this person and their family because he needs it because we know that you're so what helping person, out. What person? What family? What person? What family? The Dado and his family because they need it. And, and then before the and he goes, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Um, and the person goes, Well, do the right thing. Did he, did he tell him, Well, listen, if you guys keep harassing me, we're gonna we're gonna call cops. That's what I said. I was like, Why didn't you just say that? Oh no, the person said this is not gonna end. Do the right thing. Uh, did, did he get information where he get wanted me to leave her? Get the phone number. Uh, the number that you keep giving me are wrong numbers. No, no, no. 305-712-6570. They picked up. Because I was getting tired of it. I don't know what's happening or whatever. 712-6570. No, no, no. 305-712-6570. That's what I said. the fuck this is, it needs to stop. There's... Obviously, you know somebody. They're putting my name. They're putting your name. They're putting okay. and, and they're harassing right, 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 right. somebody. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Are you going on right now? Seven one two six seven fifty. I mean fifty seven. No. Fuck. Just text it to me, man. Text it to me. No, I don't want to. Seven twelve six five seven zero. All right. Bye. about KK, please. KK was on 428, same day, at 1.46 p.m. Um, it's from Mr. Garcia to Ms. McBama. Garcia to McBama? Yes. Okay. Let's publish KK, please. Hello. Hello? 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 
fucking phone again, man. I was going to cough on my phone and then dump it. I want to burn my finger. I was going to cough on my phone, bro, and then I'm going to get rid of my phone. Because I got a car from my office. No, I mean, I'm in my house, but like, or block it. Don't look for your office, it's your office, you know what I mean? Don't look for your phone. No, I'm not calling for my office, I'm calling for my phone. Oh, is this the last topic? I don't know, I'm just trying to fucking take phone as impossible, bro. No, but not bad, just because I should be bad. Alright, alright. You, somebody. So use a friend's phone to put three of your time in. Not yours. A friend's. Oh, alright. Okay? Alright. Anybody else call the undercover number after that call? After that call? Yes. Yes, later on they did. Okay, but I'm looking for, I guess... Immediately after. Oh, Looks immediately. like Garcia might be calling from a friend's phone. Did he do that? Objection, Judge. Calls for speculation leading. I think the first question was what needs to be answered. Was there an undercover call? Did Mr. Garcia call the undercover from a friend's phone? No, he I didn't. I really want to know. Okay. Let's go to LL, please. Can you tell us about LL? It's on uh, 42816, the same day at 2.09 p.m. It's Mr. Uh, Garcia calling Miss McBarmore. All right, so this call, is this about 25 minutes after the one we just heard? That's correct. Okay. Let's publish LL, please. <laughs> Three oh five seven one two six five seven zero. I'm sure that's the number, right? Say it one more time. Three oh five. Seven one two sixty five seventy. Yes. Alright, so I'm fucking Puerto Rican and actually speak here. I don't know who the fuck. I'm gonna try to call him again, bro. Okay. But that nigga's just fucking I'm gonna call him a real fucking person, I'm calling for my fucking phone. This ain't no local. Alright, all right. Is um Remember that other one? Do you think it's that one? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. It sounds like a fucking... It does the, the message. It sounds like a New York nigga. Yes. It says, oh, you're a fool, though. I'm, I'm busy. I'm asking you. She called me back. The darling. Like, like what? That's what, what Asian Machine said? Yeah. Shut That's up. what I said. I swear to God. Shut up. What is that? I don't know what to do. Hey, puto. I'm busy. Llamo me para atrás. Oh, I got time. Dolly. Like, what the fuck is that? Yo, are you stupid, bro? Are you some kind of fucking moron? That's what they told you? No, that's what the answering machine says when you call the number. Don't want to answer the phone. Hmm. Okay. That's weird. Yeah, that's odd. That's what I said. Very. Okay. Oh, they fucking are you that stupid? I have to use the number or they pretend to be that stupid so that we can think they're that stupid. Okay. Oh, yes, I'm in New York and... Uh, New York, Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. New York, Rico. Mm-hmm. Broward. I'll take a five number. It's how I was in Broward. No, but I'm saying you said that. Uh, but, uh, the nigga, the nigga ain't not. It's like and, it's not, and it sounds like, it sounds like, it sounds like, I don't know, man, I don't know. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right, in call LL, Mr. Garcia indicates he called the undercover number and got an answering machine. Did the undercover number have voicemail? It did. He did call the answering machine. He did speak to the undercover, though. Okay, and was that before LL or after LL? That he got the answer machine? Yes. It was, I believe it was before LL. Okay, tell us when he called. I had that incorrect in my notes. When he called the undercover number? Yes. I believe it was before the answer machine call. He actually got the voicemail of the undercover. He did. Okay, and so that was just prior to LL? 
Yes. Okay, sorry, I had that out of order. But he did, did or did not leave a message? He did not leave a message. Okay. And then can we go to MM? Yes. find it? Yes. What can you tell us about MM? It's on 428 the same day at 458 p.m. Um, this is uh, Charlie Adelson calling Katie McBowen. All right, so this is about three hours after the LL call that we just heard? That's correct. All right, we're ready for MM. Hello? Hello? Hey. Hello? Someone's, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Hold okay, on. So. Oh. Okay. Hold on, give me two seconds so we can just walk out. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, it was weird. I called the number, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, the answering machine... There's like something in the answering machine now, like, what the fuck? Like, some ghetto guy, like, talking on the answering machine and said one of the names that you said. Like, I don't understand the joke. I don't get it. So it's just an answering machine no one spoke to you? Uh, no. Like, they have to go... And like, were they talking all? all and then my answering machine, all of a sudden, I don't know, like, um, because I can't hardly remember, like, what kind of to find out for me, you know? And it was like they they said, I don't know if they said their name was was whatever that Pluto or Taco or whatever shit they said on the answering machine. All of a sudden, now now it has an answering machine, like a voicemail, I mean. What did the voice say? <laughs> that, like, I, I don't know. Let, let me find let me find out. Because it's like I can't, like, really talk at work, and then I couldn't get yeah. understand. Call, yeah. When you call, do you call with uh, with the call block? Huh? Yeah. Do you call? Yeah. Yeah, but well, it doesn't matter. It's, no matter what phone you're using, it's still, show, you know? Well, it, shows, it doesn't show who's calling you. I know. I know how to block a call. Right. That's not the point. But it's like... Star six seven. So I did that. It rained seven times. I'll be there in one minute. Without Tylenol? Um, Vicodin is it's acetaminophen. It's ibuprofen. It's not Tylenol. Yeah. Um, okay. I, you know, it's like fucking lady. Get the fuck out the way, stupid ass. Yeah, I would, I would do this. I would, um, I guess just call again later. And yeah, I'm going to say, you know what, with all this crank running, I'm going to call from every fucking body's phone and fucking leaving a message in everybody's fucking phone. From everybody's phone. Want to play games? Want to play games? It was really fucking hard because they... They picked it's up on the cell for you, and they they called, and I mean the, the only thought in my head is because so I've got one thing maybe you could find out or I'm gonna wait a couple of days and then I may call the person back. So the person was when they answered the phone at first they weren't that ghetto and as they started talking to me they started asking, talking more tough but it was more of like a I could hear a New York accent in there. And it sounds yeah. like a white no, guy. No, 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 the, the, the voicemail sound is New York, but I got to find out what's going on. But I'm saying I'm going to I'm gonna call from somebody else's phone because I don't want my phone, because, you know, I would use this phone for work. Right. And, this, like, and the, the thing is... I need is, like, somebody crank calling me. Right, listen, one thing is this. Either maybe that person will want to meet someone and talk to them about what their issue is, or 
I want to ask them. No, they're going to have an issue because um, you don't just go threatening people throwing out names. They're, they're saying that I'm, that I'm helping a Katie, or not me, but my family's helping a Katie and her family and uh, some other guy that his name began with a T that I've never, I'm like, dude, I don't, I've never met any of these people. He goes, well, well, you not, but the family has been, and they've been helping him out, uh, her and her family and, and this other You guy. haven't met, but then they're, like, it makes but, no but sense. He, to but he's like, he's like, like cause he asked me who I was, and I was like, none of your business. So I was almost, in hindsight, what I should have said was, who, because I have a big, because this is a big family and there's lots of cousins. Yeah. Who, who in my, because the Adelson family is a big family. So yeah. what I should have said to the guys, who in my family, who in the Adelson family owed uh-huh. somebody money? Give me the name. Because yeah, of course. Give me the name, and then I will go to that person in that family and say, who did you not pay? I want to know the name. I want to know the name. The only name that keeps throwing out is that this, that this Adelson family is helping out Katie and some guy named T and their family, and this guy needs your help, and it's not right. And he's like, this problem's not going away. He goes, this is not going away. He's like, it's okay, fucked up that you're not helping. Right there. Right. That's fucked up that you're not helping. Like, who the fuck are you? Are fucking, like, who uh, are you? Listen, that's like me calling someone up and being like, yeah, I know you tell JFK, um, you need to pay me. Okay, well, that's what. You didn't tell you. That is the wrong example. Like, what does that have to do with anything well, I'm getting? You always use that example. Well, like, because, I don't get it. well, because JFK died in 1963. And you weren't born then. My point is, is that I had nothing to do with any of this craziness. I want to know who, who in my family owes somebody money. Because I'm going to go to that person and say, what's going on? And that's what uh, I, that's the, ne- exactly. the next conversation I have with this person is is going to be me if if it comes to it me saying who owes money if someone owes money you gotta give me a name not like yeah oh, exactly who, who who in my family family where do you want to my be? mom who my are mom you? my mom doesn't know who these people are my dad no I want to set up whoever this fucking person is trying to fucking say shit or do whatever it is to your family, starting to harass your family, like, it's getting me mad. So well, I, don't, I don't know, mad. I don't know why they keep bringing up um, people who I've never met. That's, me, I don't, that's why it's like, who are you? Number one, okay, you need something. Who are you then? What's your real name? What's your address? Who do you have a problem with? Yeah, who, who in my family owes you money? And don't say the last name because I'm going to go to that person and tell them, if you owe this person money, what is it about, number one. And, and then I'm going to tell them, go pay them. But you got to tell me who to go talk to. Not like, oh, somebody with the last name Adelson. Well, guess what? That's like saying someone with the last name. And calling your of office Rodriguez. and shit. Like, what yeah, is Yeah, someone that? with the last name Rodriguez. So it's funny. Well, give me the fucking first name. And I will go talk to, if it was my brother who was behind us, I'm going to fucking find out. I mean, fuck, if it was my brother, I'll turn him in and get the reward money. My brother's a piece of shit. So I'm saying, like, give me the name of who owes your friend or friend's family money. And this guy said to me, he said, listen, I was with him up in Broward. I knew everything that went on. I was like, up with him in Broward. That's what I'm trying about, to understand. Yes, yeah, something about Broward. I was up with him in Broward. Uh, what? I don't know if somebody he's talking about. He's a family about. member, but he said well, he's a family member. He said he was oh, his brother. Oh, but he's incarcerated. No. He said it was this, that guy's Kuko or whatever's brother. He said, I'm his brother. I was with him up in Brown when he told me what everything had happened. That's exactly what he said. Who was exactly. up with him in Broward and I don't know what he was that happened. I don't know if he was in jail with him, he? visiting him in jail. Like, I don't know he, if he, needs to, he needs to, like, fucking, if, like, if people just can be fucking... Googling shit or whatever it well, is. And that's, and well, exactly. But the only reason I'm even bothered on calling you is because they keep wanting to talk about you. Or if I'm the wrong person, then I don't feel even horrible. But this person doesn't matter. Like, you're still harassing my fucking family, and I want to stop. I mean, when you, show, when you meet someone face-to-face on the street, when you send them a letter... 
And then when you start calling their office, the next call is to the FBI. Exactly. And, no, I agree. And my I thing will is personally this, go there. I no. don't I don't want anyone to go to jail. Because you know what people get mad when they go to jail and they feel like getting get somebody back. Same reason when when my jet ski got stolen, I did not I don't even care who fucking stole it. I said, sure, give my money back, it sucks, it got stolen, move on. I wouldn't want to catch the guy who stole my jet ski. Why? It's grand theft. I don't want to put anyone in jail who knows what the fuck it was. Okay, but you know what? If this person keeps fucking saying shit, then they need to start getting information. They need to start saying something instead of they saying need, they shit. Need to tell, they need to tell me who closed the money. Not a fucking psychic. Nobody's a psychic. Yeah, okay. I mean, a family's, got, a family's got lots of members. So, or it could have been a cousin of mine. It could have been my brother. Like, who owes the money? And I will call and that what person. And what's money? Now. Like, who? Like, you know, you could throw, I could throw in anybody saying, do that. Like, no, but let's if somebody see. calls my phone back, like, I don't, like, I'm always like, hey, who is this? I'm just, I'm just curious to see who's so interested in your family and, what, and what's going on. That's why. It's like, that's, that's why you're pissing me off. It's like, why yeah. why am I being thrown into something? If they weren't talking about you and some other guy his last, whose name goes by T, it seems like everyone goes by T these days, but whatever the guy's other name is, he said it so quick, I don't even remember. But if he wasn't talking about you... Your name and then some other guy name is a But I, you're just saying too much now. I don't even know what the fuck you're saying. You're that's confused. what I'm repeating to you what the guy said. I know, I heard you the first time. But, but that's like the only reason. Just, I know, but I'm saying. It's fucking repetitive and like, it just that, becomes so nonsense. The only reason I called you is because this guy's bringing you guys up, which has nothing I know a million me. people that starts with a T. I know a million. I know a T gets. A, a, a freaking a Tony, a freaking Taco, a freaking bro. Everybody has a nickname. Like I'm so, dude, I'm so bad at names. I think I called the guy Simon or Sammy or I don't really know what the fuck I called. Fucking I Simon, called that is guy. such a fucking white person's name. But then when I, when I told my mom I called Simon, I'm not going to say Sammy. Go on, it's beginning with an S. <laughs> I fuck everyone. Now, Sammy, and I'm like, oh, but then he responded, oh, Sammy. what is your last name? What is your, what is your address? Yeah. So that I can send your mother a fucking letter, or, or meet your mother in the freaking middle of the street. Yeah. Let's That's going to be the next call. Yep. Let's find him. All right. So what's, what's his problem? Because he's, he's about to have a big problem. He's going to have a fucking big ass problem. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, I am the fucking wrong person. I, God forgive him that he fucking said the wrong fucking name because now it becomes my business. I'll, I'll pick a new name next time to reference. Right. I hate that shit. I, do what I, do. I, I fuck bitches up for no reason. You never picked up the package, did you? I, I mean, I'm, I'm fucking all the way right here. Like, I gotta get... Right. I gotta get my kids. Uh, I gotta see. I gotta, I'm trying to figure out if I can go up like later on. Okay, let let me know. But I have. Okay, I'm uh, still here. I'm probably in here with another hour. Yeah, but I mean, you're gonna be home, right? Yeah, I'll be home. I should be home by seven. Okay, maybe you can meet me halfway. Can I have to? I know. Okay. I forgot. And okay, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you stuff about work anyway. So I have a lot of shit that I have to tell you about work. Gosh, all right. Yeah, I've been getting bad reviews on uh, online studio work on that too. But let me. Uh, um, let I did nothing but good reviews. What are you talking I know, about? I know. Right, let me let me call you. Okay. Okay. Well, that's your step out. I'll give you all fifteen minutes. So we'll stay in session mode. Everybody be seated. Were you wanting to make a proffer on Mr. Sanford? Uh, yes, sir. Proceed. All right, Agent Sanford, I want to talk to you about the Dolce Vita recording. 
Can you explain what it is that you did in reference to the recording that allowed you to produce the transcript that you that you did? As far as listening to it and mm -hmm. doing it over and over, um, I spent weeks and weeks and months um, listening with uh, noise canceling headphones and just playing it back over and over, trying to get the best the best audio, be able to you know make it as audible as possible for me to uh, make out what was being said. And do you have any specialized training or experience with the FBI to listen to inaudible recordings? Special training? No, I have um, training as a, a technically trained agent. As a what? <clears throat> a technically trained agent where I What's that? can do, um, where I do um, installs, things like that. I do handle uh, technical equipment to be able to facilitate um, uh, the recordings themselves of going out and deploying the equipment. Okay. How often have you done this process of listening to difficult or inaudible recordings to try to parse out what's being said? On other cases? Yeah. Oh, dozens of times. And what equipment did you use when you were listening to this particular recording? Uh, a laptop. Okay, any specialized listening equipment? I think you mentioned headphones or? Yep, I had noise canceling headphones and the software that went along with the equipment. All right, and what's that software? Um, it's a it's a proprietary software. Through the FBI. Yes. And does the software enhance spoken words? Does it enhance spoken words? Um, I don't know if I could describe it as enhancing. Well, why don't you tell me what it does do? Um, it it basically does the same thing that um, some like uh, Weather Channel people have, um, where it kind of. Uh, it minimizes other obstructive noises in the background. So like um, like on the football field, they use these special kind of microphones and equipment to, to hear on the field and, and cancel out the, the crowd, basically. So some of the same type of, uh, same type of equipment. All right, and <clears throat> does the equipment that you were using to, or the software that you were using to listen to this particular item, does it change anything about the words that are spoken on the? Does not change the words, no. All right but it does suppress some of the white noise and the environmental noise on the, on the tape? That's correct. Okay. And can you estimate about how many times you listened to this thing to get the transcript? Probably well over 100. And what was the type of environment that you listened to the tape in? Oh, in my office with the door shut by myself. Okay. And is the transcript that you produced an accurate product of what you were able to hear once you listened repetitively in that environment with that equipment. That's correct. Objection, improper ball turn. Oh. One moment, please, Your Honor. Obviously, it's not practical for the jury to listen to this thing over a hundred times, but is there a way for them to listen to it with the equipment that you were able to listen to it with? Uh, with the headphones, you mean? And the proprietary software. Um, it's possible. I'd have to figure that out if, it, if we were able to do that. How would we do that? Um, that's a good question. Um, I'd have to get the equipment, and I don't know how they would get the headphones hooked up, and I'm not okay. sure. Okay, I thought we'd thoroughly explored this and determined that there was no way for them to simultaneously all listen okay. to it. Okay, yeah, that's, I, I don't know the way. Okay, all right, thank you, nothing further. Crow. Special, Agent, Special Agent Sanford, you indicated that what you were trying to do is to take inaudible communication and making, aud making it audible. Is that, in essence, what you're trying to do? I'm trying to make out the words on the recording and trying to minimize the, the background noise is what I was trying to do. I'm trying so to make out what was being said. So, in essence, taking something that normally you can't hear and making it something that you're attempting to decipher what they're saying, correct? That's a fair assessment, I guess. You've indicated that you've done this how many times before? Uh, dozens. Have you ever testified with regards to this type of altered testimony in state court before? Altered testimony? I'm sorry. 
with this type of testimony before in state court? What type of testimony? I'm this, sorry. Where you take inaudible information and convert it with your own in, in making a transcript on your own. No, not with a transcript of my own. No. Are you aware of any peer review processes with regards to the methods and techniques that you use to change what was originally inaudible to now making a transcript of it? Say that again, I'm sorry. Are there any, okay. The methods that you use, are you aware of any peer review articles with regards to the specialized equipment that the FBI uses? No, I'm not aware of any. Um, to your knowledge, has this technology been compared to other technology? Not to my knowledge that I know of. No. When did you say this technology came out? Um, it's been around a while from my understanding. Right. So uh, when you say a while, does that mean like a month, a year, five years? I mean the technology itself or this particular system? Uh, the technology itself is the same thing that like weathermen use on the news and Sporting events, things like that. That's so, the technology. So like about a decade? I'd be guessing. So let me just kind of give a, a, a summation. Uh, ask I was you listening this. the first time, Mr. Saganay. I don't need a summation. Do you have anything new you want to cover with him? No, Judge. Thank you. Mr. Cox? Yes, Your Honor. Hey, did you did this transcript off the enhanced recording. Some of it I did. Using proprietary software of the FBI? That's correct. You're not at liberty to be able to tell us about that proprietary software? No, I'm not. You're not able to tell us what algorithm it uses to be able to determine what words are what words? Algorithm it uses to do what? Repeat that, please. I think that that answers our question that you wouldn't be able to tell us about the software, right? No, I wouldn't. And if we were to try to get a court order to have the FBI turn that over, it still would not be turned over, right? To my knowledge, it wouldn't be my call, though. Because that's protected, that's owned, and that's kept secret by the FBI. It's not kept secret. It is protected, though, yes. Well, it's kept secret, meaning that the only people that know about it work for the FBI, right? I don't know if that's true either. All right. Was a person involved in the enhancement along with the software? Along with the software, no. Did somebody at the FBI sit down and work on it? After I gave them a copy of it, they sat down and worked on a copy of it, correct? Correct. And you remember at deposition, we asked you if you could get us the name of that person. You remember that, right? That's correct. You never got us that name, though, did you? Uh, the name's in the report. The... I didn't personally talk to you about that, no, but the name's in the report. You remember in the deposition this year, a couple months ago, correct. I asked you if you could get that name to these prosecutors. You remember that? Yes, I do. You're saying that you've given them that name? It's in the it's in the reports that I've provided over. Now so I can't recall if I, I can't recall if I actually called them with the actual name, but his report is in the uh, is in the information. There's a 302 report. It's not a 302. It's a lab report. And who is this that did this report? I don't recall his name off the top of my head. He's a lab examiner. So since our deposition, a lab examiner from the FBI did a report. No, he did it before the deposition. But since the deposition, you gave it to these prosecutors. It was on the original in the CD, I believe. Now, I, I asked because we don't have it. Okay. Do you know what methods this, and I say unknown person because it's unknown to me, what methods this unknown person did to enhance the audio? No, I don't. All right. Turn over to the next topic right now. And I'm going to quote from a footnote in case law. Are you professionally skilled in understanding inaudible and indistinguishable tape recordings? I've never been classified as that, and I don't know of, no. You're not professionally skilled to do that? In what, in what light? My, my professional opinion or some classification? I'm not sure how you're, what you're asking me. 
I'll re-ask it. Are you professionally skilled in understanding inaudible tape recordings? Professionally skilled, in my opinion, yes. What, what specialized training did you receive to become professionally skilled in understanding inaudible tape recordings? I haven't received any training in that exact area but I've been working on it for over 20 years and, and done it many a times. And, um... Let's talk about that. We're going to jump topics. I'll come back to your training. You said that you've done this before, right? Yes. Quote, on some of my cases. Yes, not all of my cases. But those are your words, some of your cases, right? When did I say this? In my deposition or just a little while ago? In your deposition. Okay. Do you trust me that that's in your deposition? Sure. And that it's not your everyday job to do right. this? Right, it's not. But you've done it before? Yes. Can you name for this court one case where your transcript has been admitted in? No, I did not say my transcript was admitted in. I understand that, but... That's what you're asking me. Has there ever been a case that your transcript has been used? Not that I know of. Actually... I take that back. Yes, I do. I had a prison case against a federal correctional officer where we made recordings on this correctional officer, and he had, um, I can go further in the case if you want, he had actually committed a fraud against somebody, and I did transcript, and that was used in federal court. Yes. In what kind of proceeding? A uh, trial. For? Criminal trial, where he was convicted at trial. All right, let's come back over to your training. You have no certifications that allow you to understand inaudible tape recordings. No. Do, you, do you understand the question, what we're saying here? It's an inaudible tape recording so that you would have skills to be able to go in to the recording and extract out of it what was inaudible. I'm not familiar with that type of training, no, I've not been to that. So you don't have anything like that? No. What about indistinguishable tape recordings? Do you have any certifications that make you professionally skilled in understanding indistinguishable tape recordings. No. So it's just a matter of you've done it a bunch of times before, so therefore you're professionally skilled? Uh, it's a matter of doing the experience and hearing the phone calls, knowing the voices, knowing how they talk, and listen to it over and over and over, and being able to distinguish what is some of what is being said. One brief second, Your Honor. So you listen to the phone calls? Yes. Just like this jury has done here today, they listen to the phone calls. That's correct. So you're no more skilled than they are themselves of comparing the phone calls that they've just heard to what would be in the Dolce Vita video. I disagree. I've listened to the phone calls many a times. They've listened to them once. One brief second, Your Honor. Do you have a current CV? No. Do you have a CV? No, I don't. Do you know what a CV is? Yes. All right. Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. Redirect? No, sorry. Uh, um, Florida Supreme Court and Martinez, and again in Davis v. State, which was a 2013 case, is outlined the procedures for trial court to follow. Um, they've set out four steps. One, the court would determine from the recording whether the unintelligible portions make the, state, make the tape unworthy or untrustworthy uh, and therefore exclude it altogether. I've made that analysis. I find there's enough um, audible information not to cause the tape to be untrustworthy. There are certainly some parts of it very difficult to understand, but I don't find that make it untrustworthy, so I'm allowed the tape to be played as to transcripts they set out. Uh, three ways in which a transcript can be authenticated by stipulation, which is obviously not the case here, or the trial court make an independent pretrial determination 
after hearing from persons who can properly testify as to its accuracy would either be a participant or a real-time monitor of the recording with superior ability to hear. Obviously, we have neither of those situations. And they have left open in footnote 5 that the state has pointed out that an expert witness with certain professional skill uh, could authenticate expert witness professionally skilled in understanding inaudible and indistinguishable tape recordings uh, could be qualified to make such determination. Um, I don't find that Mr. that Agent Sanford falls into that category. He's not an expert witness. Uh, so I'm not going to allow the transcript to be used. I am confident that if we played the tape and gave them a transcript, that at least by halfway through the recording, the jury would simply be reading the transcript. They would be unable to match the transcript with the tape. I made great effort to attempt to do so. I did it initially thinking that would be relatively simple. Was totally unable to. I went back this weekend with headsets and again tried to do it. Again was unable to do so. Um, I'm not sure that, that what the Supreme Court has set out for us is a realistic approach. Um, we don't have the ability to give jurors headsets and, um, as we in the past have been able to do in federal court where they can hear it real well. I accept what Agent Sanford has said. I've done it myself, sat and listened to hours for transcripts, play it forward, play it back, listen again. I know that it can be done, uh, but or Supreme Court has not authorized that as a way to authenticate. When you do that, I don't know how it can be used with recording anyway, because what the jury's hearing is not really exactly what you would be hearing as the transcriber, because you're able to move it back and forth and listen very carefully. Um, so I don't know that how that's to be done in the future, but I can say that at this point in time, the Florida Supreme Court has not authorized that. I did read the cases under footnote five of Martinez. I would note that both those cases were reversals for failing to comply with this. I have not found any case where that was uh, in a straightforward way upheld. I did find one first DCA case from 1983, Golden V State, which is 429 Southern 2nd 45, where some portions of a transcript in dispute were used, uh, and it was portions used in cross-examination of a defendant, and they upheld it uh, in that case. In that case, the tape recording was enhanced and authenticated by Dr. Holbrook, who is a professor at FSU with the qualifications to make such an uh, enhancement, but he wasn't that one actually doing the transcript. It was an agent. That's the only case where I can find a case of that a sort has been affirmed. Uh, where a transcript was done in that way. So I'm not reversing my ruling. Uh, we'll give you a few minutes to take a restroom break. We'll finish up with Agent Sam.